Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slider. Hello and welcome to, you guessed it, another Star Wars Squadrons video over here on X2. These Squadrons videos have been by far the most successful thing we've ever put up on this channel, at least consistently. So if you want to watch more, well, make sure you subscribe. But we also have more content. We play lots of Empire at War. We stream almost every night, including fun games like Burial Kart, Sea of Thieves, Empire at War, and more. So if you're just here for Squadrons, consider sticking around and checking out some of the other content that I put up along with my co-hosts Charlie and Corey who you've maybe not met yet if you've only been watching these videos. Anyway, today I want to talk about capital ships in Star Wars Squadrons and I have to apologize once again, we're really getting to the point where you guys have seen all of this footage by now so I'm really trying hard to bring you guys new information at least every video. One of the major complaints about Starfighter Assault was that capital ships just didn't really do anything. They didn't engage each other, they would sometimes shoot down the occasional fighter but they weren't much of a threat. Most of the time they didn't even really move around the battlefield. This is changed by Star Wars Squadron's fleet battle mode where capital ships are not simply a part of the scenery or a static objective to blow up, but rather a fundamental part of the game. As you all may know, fleet battles is tied to a morale system. As your side increases morale, eventually you get to push forward and attack the enemy's frigates, and once those are destroyed, eventually their capital ship. But this isn't just a static event, I mean, at any point, if you want to try to attack an enemy frigate, even if morale is not with you, you can do so, it will just be very difficult because the capital ships are more aggressive when they have morale, their cannons seem to be much more powerful, they seem to fire a little bit more quickly, and you won't have the support of friendly AI and human players, at least not all the time, but it might be worth risking it, for example, if a Star Destroyer is almost near destruction. So I want to come back and talk about capital ship behavior as it relates to the morale system more in just a second, but there's also another interesting feature. So I didn't realize this at first, but you don't simply get one corvette per match. Rather, when your faction is pushing against the enemy, you will summon either a raider or a CR-90, depending on whether you're the Empire in the New Republic. These corvettes have a couple of functions. Obviously, they will screen against fighters. If you try to do a run on a raider without all of your shields pushed forward, or your speed at max, you're gonna get blown out of the sky. But they will also fully engage enemy frigates and even the capital ship at the final part of the match. This is really useful. Well, the Corvette isn't single-handedly going to take down the enemy's Architens or Nebulon B, it can provide the final shot, and it also helps other starfighters launch simultaneous attacks. A frigate being attacked by a mobile Corvette will actually turn guns toward it, so that's less fire coming towards your fighter and the Corvette will help protect against enemy starfighters as well with its extra laser cannon, so it sort of has this dual defensive role. Now the trade-off is, if the Raider or CR-90 is destroyed, that's a massive shift in morale. About half of what is needed to actually turn the tide, because how it works basically is once the morale meter has been filled, then you move from defense to offense, and you can keep that morale meter high by killing enemy starfighters, or of course lowering the enemy's morale by doing the same. And and as a note, that's not only human starfighters, but also the many AI fighters which are very common, particularly in the middle of the map. Anyway, one thing I noticed is that as morale changes, the three main capital ships on your side, the two frigates and the cruisers, will put a lot more fire forward. They will sort of put almost like a flak screen out in front of their ships. And this really surprised me, they will also take long-ranged pot shots at any ships which aren't moving. The Nadiri Shipyards map has sort of three lanes. It's almost like a MOBA in that way, which if you guys are interested, I think could make a really interesting video. But I was being sort of defensive with the Thai Reaper I was supporting some attacking ships with shields double front, sending in supplies and whatever else to my fighters who were trying to take down the enemy frigates. I didn't take any damage at all, maybe some glancing blows, but not nearly enough to get through even a couple of percentage points of my shield. When the tide changed, I moved back a little bit, but I still stayed in my lane. But before long, because I wasn't moving at all, I got absolutely destroyed by a massive turbo laser barrage from the frigate. They become really, really deadly when the morale is with them, and I think it's a really interesting mechanic. It actually helps sort of weed out your defenders, and it's a good reason to keep them alive. 
Another reason to keep capital ships alive is because they provide supplies when you're attacking or in the neutral phase. Basically, you can park under your frigate and they will heal your ship and resupply your ordnance. This is much quicker than going back to your capital ship and dying in fleet battles is a huge deal because you're dead for 15 seconds and you get a massive morale shift. So staying alive is really crucial and frigates are really good for that purpose. Frigates are useful too in another way, in another defensive way in fact. Because of the amount of fire they lay down, one strategy that I found myself employing when I played the game was running back to the protection of the ships if I was under fire. Sometimes an enemy would try to chase me, and if I could outrun them as a fast fighter and get within the coverage of my frigate, I knew I would probably be okay, and there's actually a decent chance that the enemy would be shot down. But we we haven't yet talked about the most interesting way, in my opinion, that capital ships are different in Star Wars Squadrons than in Starfighter Assault. So I didn't notice this before, but as the battle progresses, the two fleets will actually move closer to one another. Eventually, say the players don't intervene, the two capital ships will actually directly engage each other and one will be destroyed. I really like this because it acts as a sort of soft timer for the game mode, and I gotta say it's a little disconcerting when you're flying around your MC-75 in defense, maybe in a little A-wing, trying to fight off bombers and TIE fighters, and you realize that the Imperial Star Destroyer is a lot closer than it was before. Unfortunately, because of how the Nadiri shipyards map just is with a lot of clutter in the middle. I don't think the capital ships move together as quickly as they do on other maps. However, in one game of my playtest, which unfortunately I did not get footage from, the two capital ships were close enough that it seemed like they were beginning to engage turbo laser volleys. And it's not just the flagships for each faction, but if you have surviving frigates, they will also move forward. And if you can take out their frigates but keep your own, that's obviously a huge advantage. I'm kind of curious to see how that plays into the sort of final battle if both sides play defensively and it does become a capital ship slugging match will the frigates be able to turn the tide will the cr90 or the raider be the thing that makes the difference i think it'd actually be kind of cool to see a mode where the capital ships are very very strong and you can't outright destroy them yourselves but your main objective is to make them a bit squishier for your capital ship Maybe you take out some of the weapons on the front of the ship so yours is in range first. Maybe you take out the targeting computer or the shield generator or whatever else you can as the two capital ships sort of pound away at each other. Capital ships and squadrons also have a lot more details that I haven't heard people talking about. For example, the engines can actually destroy your ship. Obviously, you can fly into them, but that's not what I'm talking about. The heat and energy radiating out of the ship's engines is actually sufficient to damage or perhaps even destroy your starfighter. The capital ships also have lots of different points. There are individual cannons which can be destroyed, but there's also subsystems. There's shielding, there's energy, and there's targeting, with some of these systems having two subsystems I'm not sure which exactly, I'm, I know at least there's two different shields that you need to take out. But if you, for example, destroy the energy system, then you can do runs on vulnerable parts of the ship, almost like cracks across the surface, which will sort of explode and cause massive damage. It's all very, very cool. The capital ship shielding also works in an interesting way. You can outright destroy the shields, which is the end of it, but you can also pierce through it with a continual barrage, which of course is helped by friendly capital ships. This makes it so so attacks are easier because you don't need to fly through or under the shield to attack a hard point. You can strike from any distance. However, a depleted shield will return, so if you manage to survive a round, as long as you didn't lose any critical components, even if your ship has taken some damage, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Ships can also hit your starfighter with a tractor beam, and those are difficult to escape. You've got to put all of your energy into boost, and you're really, really vulnerable for a time. Not only from the capital ship's weapons, which of course can take you out really easily, but also starfighters in the neighborhood. But that's all I've got to talk about today. This video covered a lot from how the morale system worked, to how capital ships changed within that system, to the use of corvettes and frigates, and of course the eventual slugging match that I'm looking forward to see between the MC-75 and the Imperial Star Destroyer. I'm sure I missed something though, so if you have any questions let me know down in the chat, and if I have anything to add I'll also include it in a pinned comment or something. But until next time guys, have a good one, and may the force be with you.